In lesson 7.1, you will graph exponential growth functions. And the first one we're going to graph is y equals 2 to the x power. This equation is of the form y equals a times b to the x power. And you can see that our a value is 1 and our b value is 2 in this equation. When b is greater than 1, we know that we're graphing exponential growth. Now to graph this curve, we're going to make a table of values. We're going to let x equal some negatives, 0, and some positives, and we're going to solve for y. First I'm going to let x equal 0, so 2 to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. When I let x equal 1, 2 to the first power is 2, and when I let x equal 2, 2 squared is 4. Now going the other direction, I'm raising 2 to the negative 1 power, and to get rid of that negative exponent, remember we have to move that base to the denominator of a fraction and make the exponent positive. So I get 1 over 2 to the positive 1 power, or 1 half for a y value. And now raising 2 to the negative 2 power and getting rid of that negative exponent, I find I have 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth for a y value. Now we'll graph these ordered pairs, negative 2, 1 fourth, close to the x-axis, and negative 1, 1 half, moving a little further from the x-axis, 0, 1 is our y-intercept, and 1, 2 in the first quadrant, and 2, 4. So when I draw this curve, I'm following the x-axis and then making a sharp turn at the y-axis and increasing rapidly after that, exponential growth. Okay, so you can see that this curve approaches the x-axis but never touches it. We call the x-axis an asymptote for this curve. The domain is all real numbers because we can let that exponent be any real number. And the range, since this curve approaches an asymptote, the x-axis, y is always going to be greater than 0. Okay, now let's graph y equals 2 thirds times 2 to the x power. You can see that our y value has changed from 1 to 2 thirds. What this is going to cause is a shrink, a vertical shrink in our graph. We'll make a table of values. This time we'll let x equal negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And when I let x uh, equal negative 1, 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half, and 1 half times 2 thirds, 2's are going to cancel and we'll be left with 1 third for a y value. Now let x equal 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. Let x equal 1. 2 to the first power is 2, and 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. And let x equal 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 thirds is 8 thirds. So we can graph our ordered pairs again. Negative 1, 1 third, close to the x-axis. 0, 2 thirds is the y-intercept, and 1, 4 thirds, that's 1 and 1 third in the first quadrant, 2, 8 thirds, that's 2 and 2 thirds. So the curve follows the x-axis again, takes a sharp turn, or turns and then increases rapidly after that exponential growth. And again, the x-axis is our asymptote. So the domain is all real numbers. And the range again is y is greater than 0. We have two more graphs uh, on this page. The first one is y equals negative 2 times 2 to the x power. 
that negative A value is going to cause a reflection. Because the A value is negative, it's going to cause a reflection. And because the absolute value of A is 2, which is greater than 1, we know that this is going to be a, a stretch, a vertical stretch of our exponential growth curve. So let's make a table of values again. Let's let x equal negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. And let's substitute negative 2 in for x. 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 2 to the positive 2 power, or 1 fourth. And 1 fourth times negative 2, 2's will cancel, and we'll be left with negative 1 half. Okay, now let x equal negative 1. 2 to the negative first power is 1 over 2 to the positive 1 power, so 1 half. 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. We'll let x equal 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1, and 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And now we'll let x equal 1. 2 to the first power is 2, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So we'll graph our ordered pairs again negative 2, negative 1 half, and you can see that we're graphing below the x-axis this time. And negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 2 is our y-intercept. And 1, negative 4 is on this curve. So this curve follows the x-axis again, only below. It takes a sharp turn at the y-axis and then decreases rapidly. This is the reflection of exponential growth. The domain is the same. The domain is all real numbers. But the range has changed. The range this time is y values less than 0. And our asymptote is still the x-axis. That's the horizontal line that this curve is approaching. Okay, in our second graph on this page, y equals 2 times 3 raised to the x minus 2 power plus 1. Here we have uh, a value of 2 subtracted from x in our exponent. That is going to cause a shift right two units. We also have 1 added to our uh, a times b to the x power, and that's going to cause a translation up one unit of our horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to put that asymptote in place before I make my table of values. I know that this curve is going to approach uh, y equals 1. It'll get infinitely close to it, but never touch it. It's an asymptote. So in our table of values this time, let's put negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I put negative 2 in for x, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So I have 3 to the negative 4th power, which is equal to 1 over 3 to the positive 4th power, or 1 over 81. And 1 81st times 2 is 2 81st. 2 81st plus 1 is going to give us 1 and 2 81st. Okay, then I'll put negative 1 in for x. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. 3 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over 3 to the positive third power, or 1 over 27. 1 27th times 2 is 2 27ths, and 2 27ths plus 1 is 1 and 2 27ths. Let x equal 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. We have 3 to the negative 2 power, or 1 over 3 to the positive 2 power. That's 1 9th. 1 9th times 2 is 2 9ths, and 2 9ths plus 1 is 1 and 2 9ths.
Okay, let x equal one. One minus two is negative one. Three to the negative first power is one over three to the positive first power, or one third. One third times two is two thirds, and two thirds plus one is one and two thirds. Now let x equal two. Two minus two is zero. Three to the zero power is one. One times two is two, and two plus one is three. Okay, put these ordered pairs on our graph negative two, one, and two eighty-first. We know we're close to that uh, horizontal asymptote. Negative one, one, and two sevenths, two twenty-sevenths. We're moving away from the asymptote. Zero, one, and two ninths. Still moving further away from the asymptote. That's our y-intercept. One, one, and two thirds. And two, three. So our curve is following its asymptote, taking that turn and increasing after that. Domain and range. Domain hasn't changed. Domain is still all real numbers. And the range this time is y is greater than 1. We have a new horizontal asymptote that the curve is approaching, but never touching. OK, here we're going to look at our simple interest and compound interest formulas. Simple interest is interest just paid on a deposit. but Compound interest is interest paid on the deposit and on previously earned interest. So interest on interest. So our money is going to grow exponentially. This is a form of an exponential growth equation. A equals P times a base of 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power. So in our problem, it says you deposit $5,500 in an account that pays 3.6% annual interest. Find the balance after two years if interest is compounded monthly. So to find that amount in the account after two years, and for P, this is our deposit, and that was $5,500. Okay, 1 plus R, that's the interest rate that the bank is paying the annual interest rate, and it's 3.6%, so we'll put it in as a decimal. Don't forget to put it in as a decimal. So 0 0.036 is equivalent to 3.6%. Over n, now n is the times compounded yearly, and it says that this is compounded monthly. Interest is compounded monthly, so that since there's 12 months in a year, we'll put 12 in for n. 12 in for n again in our exponent times 2. We want to know how much money is in this account after 2 years. So this is what we have to put into our calculator now to get that amount that will be in this account. So just enter 5,500 times a base of 1 plus 0 0.036 over 12 raised to the 12 times 2 power. So when I do that, I'm getting a, an amount in the bank of $6,388.65. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1, 2, 3, and 6 on pages 479 and 481 of your textbook.